without further ado, thanks for being here. Thanks, man. Yep. Thank you. So, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Like, um, my presentation is called How to Freaking Crush It in Your Market. Now, what's interesting is that none of you guys need to know how to freaking crush it in your market because you are crushing it in your market. But we are recording this, and we are going to get it to the other dealers as well. Um, but I thought what I would do is go with, like, tell you what our top three drivers of new business are at New Scooters for Less. Okay, and the, fir the first is Google SEO. Um, now, I think we all know how important Google is to let, you know, having customers find our business. But there's so many things. Is everybody on this map in your area? You want to make sure that you're on this map, right? It's super important. I don't think a lot of people realize that reviews help your placement on this map. So you should definitely be asking for reviews. I'm going to get into that a little bit more as well. But this is the number one way customers find out about our business. Number two is the branding itself of the bikes, the decals. This NS for All logo is on the side of every single scooter that we sell. Does everybody do that? Because it is super, super important. I can't tell you when stu you know, I ask students, like, hey, how did you hear about us? They go, oh, I went out to a block of scooters. And on the University of Florida campus, there's literally like a block of 100 scooters. And when 65% of them have your logo on the side, they're at least going to come by and check you out. So that is super, super important. Um, again, the decals, license plate frames, I think this is also huge. Definitely encourage everybody to do that. Now, just a little side note, this decal, what we try to do at New Scooters for Less is give as much value in our brand as possible. And what I mean by that is that when you're buying a scooter from New Scooters for Less, you're getting all of this extra value for free. So when you buy a scooter from us, with this, you get free pickups, on major service, free deliveries on major service. So if you run over a nail, get a flat tire, call us. We're just going to come out and get it, no additional charge. If we have to order a warranty part for your scooter, and you're going to be without your scooter for a week or two because we're waiting on that part to come to us, then we're going to provide you with a rental for free. It's included with this. We give our customers a discounted labor rate. So I don't, you know, I would love to find out what other labor rates are in the room, but ours is $80 an hour for our stuff, $100 an hour if it's not. So you can bring your Honda Ruckus to us, and we'll be happy to service it for you, but because we're not the Honda dealer and you didn't buy it from us, you're going to pay $100 an hour. So it's giving our customers value here. Now, the other really great thing about this is that it incentivizes our customers to leave this logo on for their entire college career. Why? Because this value passes on when they sell it to somebody. So it doesn't stick with the customer, but it sticks with the scooter. So that's great because if Ken sold it to Bob, then Bob's gonna get all of that value as well, which is great because it's gonna give him, it's gonna allow him to sell it for a little bit more, and it's gonna give him a lot more value. That's what I just said. Now, number three, revenue drivers, of course, word of mouth. I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. I know everybody's like, no shit, Colin. <laughs> but, uh, but it's true. I think, you know, I think in some ways, as we get busy as business owners, I don't want to say that we get complacent, but we get complacent. right? We forget about the things that made us special in the beginning. And I want to like reflect on some of these things right here. Now, the first. <coughs> First thing you want to do when it comes to word of mouth is really focus on this Google SEO. And please check right now and think, like, are you missing something? Because the first impression of your business rarely happens at your store, right? We all understand this. Social media, Google reviews. If I'm looking to buy a scooter, I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to search. Now, do you have pictures? This is obviously our dealership. So you can swipe left or right and see all of these pictures of our dealership. <coughs> Reviews, like I said, are super, super, super important. Um, you know, we have 300 plus. Now, Colton, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you, because I know that you guys have almost 500 reviews. Is there anything in particular like you're doing to get people to actually leave reviews? Because who struggles getting people to leave reviews? It's good ones, that is. <laughs> OK, like I, it's something that I have a challenge with. Is there anything that you guys are doing in your store? Just ask. Away. Just ask. Constant. Stay on it. Yeah, that way we can get a 
bad one, it's watered down too. Right. When, 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 when do you ask? Um, I just count them, yeah. I feel like they're Now, I do the same thing. Like, I'm really encouraging my team to look for the opportunities to ask for a good review when somebody's like, oh my gosh. It was such a great experience. Like I think sometimes we just let that go out the door. We say, oh, thank you very much, and we just let that go out the door. And I really encourage my team to look for those opportunities to be like, hey, thank you so much. Like, will you please leave us a review? You know, it would mean the world to us. And, and so we just, you have to look for those opportunities to ask, but they are super important. Colin, do you find that Yelp is a thing of the past? I don't like, yeah, I mean, Yelp, I think, and I'm going to get into like Google reviews and responding to reviews and stuff. I think. <sighs> Google is, I mean, Yelp is just so, I don't know, I feel like very anonymous a lot of the times, and I feel like there's so yeah, much yeah. negative press about like them, like, charge, you know, say, hey, especially with businesses, it's like, the fact that they can filter certain reviews, just, you can see and then you go away, but yeah, you can do that on Google. right, like, the fact that, like, the, that Yelp decides what's important or not, and filters the good ones, away because our Yelp reviews are like three stars, but there's like... 48 five-star reviews that have been filtered. Like, why? Had, why? Just, just a quick story. We had, I had replaced a Malaguti yesterday that I sold used with a new buddy. Wow. Because it had reached that point. Five comebacks. You know, this woman just in tears. And she she wrote about it on Yelp. And it was one of the filtered ones. I was just like, come on, man. I just asked people to leave on Google, Facebook, the places where I know it's going to be seen. I yeah. my $25 still credit. Do you? See, like, we, uh, we don't. We've struggled with that because a lot of people say, oh, like, they're, they're paying you to leave a review. They'll give you $25 for a review, and I don't do I've even had trouble with, like, one of the things that we did to kind of get past that was, like, hey, we're going to donate $5 to this charity. It's not going to you, but it's going to go to this charity. Just if you just take the time to leave us a review, and I've even had that, like, come back and haunt me. Be like, oh, they're paying, like, paying you to leave a review, and it's just like, it's a little out of context, and we never said you had to leave us a good review. We were just asking you to review our business. Usually it's people I have a good relationship with in the selling process. Like, hey, I'll give you credit if you... If right. You. So we just try to get our team to encourage them to do it at the sale, uh, do it with follow-ups. I'm going to get a little bit into follow-ups in just a few minutes, but just realize that they are very important and do everything you can to get people to leave you reviews. We have, um, we have about a dozen of, these guys are the greatest, great value, blah, blah, blah. Four stars. Thanks for knocking us down. At least it's not three. <laughs> right? Sorry about that. That's a good answer. So, guys, an, a new feature here, too, that a lot of people aren't aware of is this post segment right here. So, when you click post, you can actually like it's almost kind of like a Facebook post. It'll have like a feed of them. This is like a one that we made for last month, little sale that we were doing. You can highlight specials, bring attention to certain events, share what's happening in your shop. A lot of people are not using that post feature yet. So I would encourage you to look at that and, and start making posts on your Google accounts. Um, uh, does, that, does, that affect your, does that factor into the Google algorithm if you're actively using the Yes, of post? course. No, yeah, it definitely does. You know, but, but the thing is, like, if I go, if I search Gainesville scooters and then I, like, find, you know, you're going to see the post. You find new scooters for less and then you see the post and then you have a sale special and it has find out more and it links directly to your website. Like, it just, it's just giving information. It's making it more active. So, yes, absolutely. Um, another thing, this is, this is something that I've been harping on a lot is this Google Allo. So if you see right here, this is something that I have that most of you probably don't. Okay, this is Google Allo. This allows you to have message. Now, this is my competitor. I just blanked out all his stuff. But you can see here, his just has directions and save. He doesn't have this message feature. So by going and setting up Google Allo, which looks like this is the logo. You just go Google, Google Allo, <laughs> and it'll, po it'll pop up. But <laughs> you can have this. Now, a lot of people are like, and what it does, it's basically a text forwarding, right? So you set it up, you can put your phone number on it, and customers can then hit this and say, hey, like, wondering what time you close or whatever it is, whatever question they want to ask, and it's going directly to your phone, but it's not giving the customers your phone number. Now, yeah, it's, it's anonymous, it's just a forwarder. A lot of, I know, like, a lot of business owners I talk, like, I don't want that extra work, I don't want that, but just realize that it's a leg up. 
You know, if your competition is not doing it, my competition is not doing it, if I'm doing it, it's a leg up. So this right here is one that happened just last week where a customer messaged me on a Saturday through Google Allo and said, hey, like I saw that your shop is closed, just uh, looking to reserve summer storage. And all I did was say, hey, yeah, absolutely, here's the link. And I secured that $300 when I was closed through Google Allo message. So when you respond, it doesn't give your phone number. It does not give your phone number. Are you, are you able to receive that as an email, or is it automatically a text message? This is a text message. Do you want to have one phone dedicated? No, like, you, like I, use my, I use my phone, but Google Allo is literally an app. So you'll get a notification when that pops up. It pops up like a, um, like a text message, but then you can access them all in the app. But can I, can I access it in my app, and he accesses it in his? And then you know who answers Or do you have to have one phone that you're doing it on? I think you, as long as you have access to the same Google Allo account, you could both respond. Okay. Cool. Like Facebook Messenger, or they didn't say it. Yeah. But I just think a lot of people aren't realizing that in your markets, this is a competitive advantage because a lot of, it takes for, it takes people forever to like get on this kind of thing, and we're messaging our customers when our competitors are not. So just realize that. And then of course, things to keep in mind, guys. Describe this place, features, and vibe. It's right here. Okay. When customers are visiting you and they click this, they're describing the vibe of your dealership. And I, this stuff is important. I just think a lot of people are missing the boat with a lot of this. Um, just make sure that that customer experience is fantastic. That is something like that we harp on all the time. Our number one core value is to create, create and recreate the UCE, the ultimate customer experience. Um, so once you get customers to the dealership, are you giving them something to talk about? We call this the whoa dam. Every time somebody walks into my dealership, I want them to go, whoa, damn. You know, like that's the experience that we're trying to create. Um, now, it starts with the outside of our dealership. I have seen plenty of beautiful dealerships. You guys are, do great. I'm going to show you a few features of mine. This is not to like brag, this is just to show you like some of the things that we do that might be a little bit different. Now keep in mind, I think dealerships should be catered to the audience of your dealership, to the demographic. I'm talking to Colton in the back. He sells way more 150 cc's than I do. I sell a lot of 50 cc's. It's 95% college students. When you look at this, this radiates college students. Okay, so I get it. I'm not saying go do the stuff that I'm doing. I'm just saying know who your audience is and make sure that you are targeting that customer with your dealership. Now, this is a half mile from the University of Florida. Of course, when you're coming down the street and you see a Vespa on top of the sign and you see 50 scooters out front, it has that wow factor. That's, that's the first thing that you see when you come to our dealership. When you walk in, this is our waiting area. Great for college students, bean bags, lots of bright colors. Jenga. Jenga, like all of it. I mean, that's, we want them to have fun while they're, while they're waiting. Chalkboard wall, this is like our guest board so people can sign, sign the guest wall. This is my office, our office, I should say. I share it with four or five other people. Um, but same thing, beanbags in there. This is our service department. Now, it's very, very clean. I know most people don't like to clean up their service departments. They like to keep it just, oh, I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be the same way tomorrow. But you know, I think that presentation, that wow factor, when parents walk in and they go, oh my gosh, like I could eat off of this floor. How often do you paint? How often do we paint? Yeah. We don't. Like, I mean, we have the floor cleaned once a month, and it's expensive because of the type of floor we have. It's an epoxy, so uh, we spend about $800 a month like having the whole dealership polished. But it definitely has that wow factor. Now back here, this is where customers come in through this door back here, and there's actually a yellow line back here. So this is our service counter. So, so our customers can watch their scooters being worked on from behind that line, um, which is just kind of, it offers a unique experience, allows people to see the bike being worked on. I think in a world that's very distrusting, you know, people like to see the product actually being worked on. Um, this is something that's extremely unique, okay? We have a prize center. This is what it looks like. <laughs> nice. This is our reward, our reward system, okay? So when you come in to New Scooters for Less and you have service, and you pay for service, we spit out tickets like we're an arcade machine. Okay, we say, hey, here's all your tickets. We give it to you. 
then you can either buy things on that wall right now. If you get 30 tickets, you can buy all this stuff, or you can save up and get like one of the systems, Nerf guns, floats, like whatever. <laughs> but, or you can use the tickets to pay for future service as well. We definitely allow them to do that. But again, being in a college market, people come in, they're like, holy hell, like what is this? <laughs> you know, so it just has that, that wow factor. Um, this is just another shot of it there. But I, so one of the things I always encourage people to do is like when, is like look at what everybody else is doing and do something that's the opposite. Do something that makes you unique, that caters to your audience. You know, I always like to try to stand out. I don't want to be the same. And I think it's one of the reasons why we've been so successful. It's because we don't like to copy other people. We like to be original and come up with our own, our own thing. Now, one of the other things that we do are swag bags. Now, this is something that we create where we'll get a bunch of pins. We'll get a bunch of businesses around town to give us swag to put in these bags. And then when we're selling scooters during back to school time, we just uh, we hand them out like to customers. They get on their scooter, say, "Hey, here you go. Here's just an extra bag of swag. Got like T-shirts, all sorts of stuff." And it's it's kind of cool because if you network with the other businesses in your community, then a lot of them will just give you free stuff. A lot of them will give you <coughs> promotional gear. They'll give you five dollar you know five dollar coupons or gift cards to their business. You'll be surprised at what you can get, and then you're giving your customer all this extra value at the time of purchase. Um, now we only do this during our back to school time because our back to school time is insane. Just to give you an idea, last month we sold 24 units, which is the worst month of the year. In August of last year, we sold 311 units in 30 days. So, and on one, in one day, back to school Saturday, we sold 42 scooters on that one day. So it is insane. Our process has changed and a lot of it has to do with just the extra value that we give to our customers. This is something else we like to do. Now, everybody likes to post up pictures on social media, get, a, get the customer with their new bike. We just do it a little bit different. What we do is we have a bell back here in the back. So we run up, we ring the bell, ding, 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 ding. It's really loud. Everybody comes rushing to the mats. We've got the scooter there. Take a picture with the customer in their scooter. I love this one because Mike has his eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's just something like we, we like to do. Again, making that customers experience so grand whether it's their birthday or not we want them to feel like it's their birthday if it is their birthday then it's usually even beyond we have like silly string and stuff we'll just like go everywhere we have like birthday balloons we'll put like helium balloons on uh, on the scooter like all sorts of stuff just to make it very extravagant all of this does one important thing it creates viral word of mouth in our community we have so many people who are like, who just come to us because, oh yeah, go to New Scooters for Less, go to New Scooters for Less, go to New Scooters for Less. And it's because of the experience that we create, that's why people are coming to us. Now, on the flip side of that, if somebody has a bad experience, we all know where they're gonna go to tell everybody, right? And it's always, always, always social media. Um, it's just so easy for people to bitch on social media, right? They'll open up Facebook and say, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it, like this happened to me, blah, 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 and they'll tell everybody. Now, on the flip side of that, like, if they have a great experience, we're lucky if they tell one person, right? They're always going to tell 15 people or the whole world if it's a terrible experience, but they'll tell, like, they might say, hey, I had this really great experience, you know, like, to one person if you're lucky. So, my suggestion with social media is to be proactive versus reactive. And let me tell you the way that I'm proactive versus reactive. Let me actually pull one of these out real quick. Actually, I'll hand these out. You guys can just pass them around. But this, let me keep one. This is my business card. Okay. 10% of the room knows what this is. <laughs> but this is my Snapchat card. Who's on Snapchat? Who's on Snapchat? Okay. Again, this is my demographic, right? This is my audience. This is very college students. But what I do is when I'm selling that scooter, when I'm, when I'm doing this, like, and after this is all done, we take the picture, we go around, we go high five, high five, high five, the whole, the whole team high fives the customer, we go around. The last thing I do is I take this business card and I go up and I say, hey, Ken, look, 
if you ever need me, this is my personal business card. You just snap me, I'll be happy to answer any question you ever have about your scooter. Right now, the thing is, I deliver on that promise when they have a sound that they're not familiar with at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. They'll pull out their phone, they'll take a quick snap. Hey, Colin, like the scooter's making a funny sound. I don't know if this is normal. Like, should I be concerned about something? Send me that 10 second video, and then I can respond and get back to their concern right then and there. Okay, now I understand not, not everybody's going to respond to that on a Friday night at 10 p.m., but just realize that there's people like me that are, and that's gonna be the difference maker. So um, I just, I want you guys to find what works for you and just have a habit of over delivering, okay? There's a principle that I always refer to called the 212 degree principle, okay? At 211 degrees, you have super hot water, at 212 degrees, you have boiling water. Boiling water creates steam. Steam can power a locomotive. That's one degree of difference. I refer to that principle all the time. It's what we do at New Scooters for Less that is just taking us a little bit further. This is how I'm proactive on social media. Like I said, I hand this out. The focus is I would tell people to stop using social media as a way to promote your business. I think so many people are, get on there. We have this sale, this sale, this sale, this sale. Start using social media as a, as a way to deliver a customer service experience. Again, like I said, this is where customers are Snapchatting me, but maybe you just do this through Facebook Messenger. Maybe you do this through Twitter you know, direct message, through Instagram direct message. There's plenty of ways you can do this but just use those platforms to deliver customer service. And I think that is a great way to get in the habit of being proactive. Like I said, this is my business card. What was really unique was that the Huffington Post wrote about us on a blog that they did talking about how we use Snapchat to deliver that customer experience. We have this snap code on everything. It's on our t-shirts, it's on our invoices, it's on the receipts that print from our merchant machine. It is everywhere. Again, I think the key is being accessible and quick to take action. If somebody messages me, we only do that during back to school season because usually mom and dad are there with their student at the time of purchase. So I'm just using this as an example of ways that you can really segment the newsletters to cater to your audience, right? We have a lot of parents. We have a lot of students. Um, but you can, you could segment it by, you know, specific communities or you know, products type, age ranges, whatever you wanted to do, you could create that. Um, and, you could, and it's all in MailChimp, guys. Uh, that, uh, like I said, that's what we use, okay? But this is the number two thing that people are not taking advantage of. Like I said, this is our newsletter here. That This is the one that we're sending out four more weeks until summer, and then it has links that go to the website. So today, this is what everybody's clicking summer C the entire summer and it just and it's leading to sales and I'm not spending a ton of money marketing I'm just targeting my current customers sending them information that they need I think a lot of people think newsletters are very outdated which in the macro they are we get like we get like 20% open rates but that's all I need it's going to the it's going to the people that I need to see it it's not going to a bunch of random people it's going to our customers still see it come across. I mean, I delete stuff every day, and I still see it. I'm like, oh, REI sent me another email, and I delete it. Doesn't mean I open it, it's still on my mind. So the right. fact that it's showing up in their box, I think that's important, too, you know, we, even if they don't click through. We try to create extra value for our customers that make them want to visit it. And one of the things we do is quarterly, like every season change, we put out tips for riders. This yeah. Is Right. 
But if you're talking battery maintenance wise, you know, sure. Do you guys talk here's about battery maintenance? Five, here's a five dollar coupon off your tender well, yeah, while yeah. you're at it. Well, yeah, yeah. We're talking about you know battery maintenance and whatever is tips. You know, we can also just in fine point where you just not a big sell, just just the bottom. It's all sell. Battery tenders, you know. I think you can never go wrong by providing your customers with value. Like, you can never go wrong. So always do what you can to provide value. The number three thing is responding to negative reviews, whether it be on Yelp or Google. And you can't respond on Yelp, can you? Yes, you can. And you absolutely should. Now, like I said, we also get negative reviews. Like, we're not, we're not perfect. So, but the thing here, and this is all that matters, and this is honestly like I've had competitors that go out of business because of the way they treat customers, customer service. I mean, you cannot, you cannot get defensive on these things. You cannot be like, oh, hell no, let me tell you like it really was, you know, and then like get all defensive and get into it and start fighting with them. You just need to understand that other customers now are reading this and what you need is a nice professional review that says that shows that you're hey like I'm really sorry we wanted to we want to take care of this for you and take the high, yeah absolutely take the high road and it, but but respond do not ignore them you can actually set set it up to where Google will notify you when there's a review as soon as there's a negative review we're responding immediately a lot of the times we can hunt down who the person is, contact them, find out what's going on. We get a lot of negative reviews removed because we actually try to take care of the customer and, and solve the problem. So you can do that as well, but don't ignore them and don't be defensive. And um, in summary, like I said, top three things I think you guys or dealers in general are not doing are follow-ups, newsletters to customers and responding to negative reviews. Now guys, I am really into video and stuff. So I have a new like series that I'm doing, like a little YouTube show. It's called Dealership. Like if you literally type dealership.tv into your browser, it'll take you to a form that you fill out. Just allows us to confirm that the people watching are actually dealerships. But I go like deeper into the things that we're doing at my scooter dealership and talking about customers, talking about team members. Like it's just deeper nitty gritty stuff that we don't put out publicly to the world. And uh, what happens is it's gonna start going up every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and then it comes off 72 hours later. So sign up and you'll get access to that if that's something that you're interested in. We also do a vlog and S4L TV. We have like 100 episodes. You can actually like watch, I mean, it's like our own little mini TV series of what's happening in our dealership. You can be exposed and see what's going on behind the scenes and see see our dealership, see how things are laid out. Um, just, uh, just something unique that we're doing, but it's just, I just have this passion for video. Um, and then I wanted to show you some of the videos that I am working in collaboration with Genuine for you guys, because I think one of the things dealers always need are good promotional material, good product um, to sell product, uh, right? At our dealership, we have all, this, all the TV screens to a Chromecast, and we actually create a long YouTube, like eight hour, like video that's just the same content over and over, and we just up, you know, play it from YouTube. Right, so, so if you guys like pay attention to the length of them, the reason they're the length that they are is because we want you to be able to use them on Instagram. Instagram allows for a 60 second video, so that's why they're strategically under 60 seconds. Um, I, I'm a huge, huge into video. You know, you need to be using this stuff on Instagram, on Facebook, but not only that, you can actually, who does Facebook targeted ads in their business? Okay, if you're not, you're missing the boat. Okay, like you can, you can target specific age, ages, demographics, every, I mean, it, it's incredible the stuff that you can do and you're not wasting dollars. You're physically targeting the people that need to be seeing the video. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the things that you guys, I mean, just try to stay on top of social media marketing because I mean, even for Snapchat, I know like that's not relevant to everybody, but we did Snapchat stories. I mean, who, you know, everybody knows what Instagram stories are. It's very similar, except it's for Snapchat. I mean, I was getting, I was spending like $50 and getting like 35,000 impressions 
to specific call it like college student demographic overnight i was getting 35,000 impressions overnight i mean the stuff that you can do with social media marketing and targeting is just incredible and uh it shouldn't be discounted because it's that's just the direction that's where the world's going i mean it's it's all digital guys Facebook owns Instagram. So like, I mean, in terms of, we usually do the same ad on both. So uh, I would say that we get more, I, I advise people to kind of stay away from, you know, if you just let Facebook decide, they're gonna put your ad everywhere. So they'll put it on the, the right hand, you know, desktop news feed or like, uh, everything that I do is in the feed. So, cause I, I mean, everybody does this guys. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And I want it in the feed. Right, so we do both. Right, right. Which one do you get more action? Um, it depends on the ad. I would say like we usually get more action on Facebook. I can tell you I've had wild success with Instagram. Now we were one of the first people doing Instagram ads uh, in Gainesville, and I did one promo that was for a month. I spent two hundred dollars, and I sold like fifteen scooters from it. I mean, it was crazy. But that was like right when Instagram came out. So it was. I mean, with advertising. So there was a. Uh, It just, it, it depends, all of it. But again, like, like, that might not be right for you. So I want to be very clear on that. You know, I know a lot of people who have mad success with Craigslist, right? I don't think Craigslist ads should be discounted. Like if you, Kyle, you were telling me what, you're spending like $1,000 a month on Craigslist and you're killing it. Like Kyle's killing it, spending $1,000 a month on Craigslist. If I spent $1,000 on Craigslist, it would be a complete waste. So just know it, it depends on who your demographic is, who your target is. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to advertise on the six o'clock news on TV. <laughs> but, but it might be right for somebody, right? If that is your demographic, just realize 95% college students, college students' time is right here. Everybody, like all of it is right here. What's so, that promo that you offered that triggered those uh, 14 sales? Um, so on the Instagram campaign, are you talking about the Instagram campaign? Is that what it was? Yeah, so that was right. The reason that was so successful was because we were the fir- one of the first to market on Instagram. Um, you know, I'm always staying on top of what's happening in the digital world because when Snapchat filters came out, right? You, you guys seen Snapchat filters before? Those that do Snapchat filters? Really cheap. I can look like, We, we started placing Snap, Snapchat filters on top of dormitories on, at University of Florida campus. Why? Because they're not just one level. They're like seven le- you know, three or four levels. You know, they're, they're tall buildings, and people would see our Snapchat filters, and we had great success with it because we were the first ones in the community doing it. So I'm trying to stay on top of what's happening marketing-wise and being one of the first to execute on that type of marketing. Um, the reason that was so successful was because we had a picture – that said $200 off everything, our biggest sale ever. And it was a picture of an A-frame chalkboard that said that in front of two scooters. And we posted that and it was promoted. And then people just started tagging their friends. And it was like towards the end of the year, it was like in November, people started tagging their friends. And we just got a bunch of sales from it. Here's, here's an example. So I took a picture and these are filters. It's three dots and a dash. That's a, a little bar that's right there. If you go uh, one more, RPM Italian. It's a restaurant right next door. So there's people in this block that have Snapchat filters to drive business. And these are RPM Italians. That's not a 21-year-old that's going to RPM Italian. Well, I think it's important to know, like, everything scales up, right? Facebook was for kids until it's, like, for old people now. And then Instagram was for kids until it's for 40, 50 year olds now. Now Snapchat's for kids and like everything's gonna scale up. Snapchat won't be for kids forever. It's gonna, it's gonna go up. So the quicker you get on there and get engaged and learn how it works, the better off you're gonna be. So are there any other questions for me? I know like we're short on time, so. But, well, hey, thank you guys. If you have any other questions, one, one I'll tell you, I just wanna thank these guys for putting this on because The value here is getting to know all of you. I mean, I've interacted with so many of you guys online and, and being able to like actually put faces to names and like build relationships, it's like an honor. Like I, I've seen the stuff that you guys do. I'm inspired by you guys. If I can do anything to help you, please let me know. But I want to make sure that I know all of you before I leave here you know, on Wednesday. And, uh, and so just thank you to you guys very much. I appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it.